So hi everyone. Um, today I thought I would show some of my recent prints um, that I got done of um, some of my uh, digital paintings. So here, let's just get them out of this packaging, please. So just to talk about them a little bit, um, this little print is um, is a 8 by 10 and is entitled um, Oh dear, it's raining. I think that's the title for it. And I really like the blues and kind of hints of purple and that come through. And uh, she was one of my first actual digital paintings um, that I started in this series with their, you know, their large eyes and and I really love the deer, so I want to do some more deers, um, just because of this one, because she was just so gorgeous. I just love it, and um, yeah, and the way that that kind of abstract of the umbrella coming in, and I just really love the colors, and yeah, so that's one of my prints, which you'll find also in my um, shop, my online shop. Um, this print I created for my daughter well I was I was working on her and, and she saw me working on the pig and I wanted to work some more on the pig but she really she really liked the pig the way it was so I left it like that but I really love I mean there's so much opportunity in different ways of how to express uh, with the digital brushes on um, and I use um the app called procreate on my iPad um, to draw to paint this in uh, so I really love the different brushes and what you can use the different effects like here and the hair um, and it's so easy and so much fun to use but I've used a lot of social um, no not social I mean software um, digital software in the past and the procreate procreate one is has been really handy because I get to sit with the kids and I can be painting and sketching away while um, they are there with me. Uh, so yeah, and I just like the little details of the colors that I put in, in the background. It's just so much fun. Now and again, I'll come back and I'll look at some of the work I've done in the past and, and then remember some details that I could have added in more recent work or just to remind myself of the different gestures that I'm doing. So uh, this one um, was part of my, um, I had a whole lot of different sketches and what I was doing was trying to get the hair of the characters to be kind of placed in different ways. So like this one, they're just up, up there. And then this one, they're slightly more to the sides. And so by the time I um, got to this, I wanted to do it slightly down here, so it's just to get different um, perspectives on the styles as well. But a lot of these, um, I mean, this series was inspired by thinking about my daughter and specifically thinking about my daughter and as she's now much older, she's five now, and what kind of things I can have, what kind of um, inspirations I can have in her room. Uh, for her specifically so that's what sparked off this whole new series and and then being inspired by her I think she has quite beautiful large eyes so that was something I was going for and then I'm always doing these puffs in her hair because it was just easier to deal with her her afro that way is just to deal with puffs basically so and she's really cute with them so and I love color so there's a lot of color um, in all of these and it's the brushes that also inspire me because right now I'm trying to make this a painting year and I'm trying to figure out how to get my physical paint to work the same as this and it's gonna be I mean I spent the last three years using these brushes uh, three four years using these brushes and so even then I'm not as familiar as I could be because it's like every stroke there's a new idea inspired by another stroke or another brush. So 
is constant experimentation. That's what I call these constant experimentation. You have a basic idea, but it's mostly just constant <laughs> experimentation and exploration. And and these are just and the colors, the accessibility to colors, the affordability. I mean, an iPad is expensive, but once you have that and you have the Procreate and you have all the variety of apps you can use, it's quite it's quite um, liberating. But for an artist and for myself, painting with physical paint is quite expensive. It's quite messy uh, when my kids were younger. And getting the time to go into a studio environment where it was safe to kind of use those kind of paints without my kids chewing on a tube or something like that of paint. The digital work really, really helped a lot because I could still be creative and and so yeah and then also be free to use a huge variety of color palette I mean with this with Procreate what you can do um, probably with a lot of other software as well but because I'm using Procreate is you can take pictures of you know any colors you see around you generally in your everyday and you can actually add that to your palette in your actual Procreate color pick and mix um, options so yeah so it's a lot of fun it's very versatile for a lot of ideas and here again it's a slightly different style where she's got her hair coming down and this is kind of the idea of a surreal cloud she's floating on so I usually do the background and then I um, I, can, I put more layers and kind of use um, the layers also the colors in their eyes as well. So like you can see here the colors you see around the yellows um, I use them in their eyes as well this kind of turquoise green So that's kind of what I've been doing and it's kind of unified the pieces because I've been doing that so um, This one there's no yellow anywhere else, but yeah, well, artistic license, let's call that artistic license. But generally, I use a lot of the colors in the actual eyes as well. And I think this little bird is so cute. And um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And, and also, um, on some of them, I've been writing as well. Just kind of inspirations about the story of the character. And um, so many ideas to come still. Just a lot more stuff. This one, um, I think this one was called, let's see, this was called Floating on a Cloud. This is called Conqueror. Uh, I'm not sure if I call this Piglet or Little Piggy and a Girl. I need to think about that. But um, my characters, um, what I'm usually going for is characters that are they're mainly children because I'm really interested in the freedom children have when they're young and the opportunities and the adventures and explorations that they can have also about that aspect of being confident in themselves and enjoying their childhood so being brave being courageous um, being loving being kind those are kind of the the themes I'm running through my pieces so that's what my characters are supposed to be they are people who look out for other people so and also they have fun and adventure so this little character is and her friend the fox are called this is a um, called we're we are not bandits though they obviously look like they're up to something but um, because of their cuteness, we allow them to do whatever it is they're doing, basically. So, But my daughter really liked this one. And um, I ended up... Uh, what was it? Yeah, I ended up making a clock for her with this. Because she really loved this character when I was um, creating it. So I'll show you. I'll get the clock and show you what it was that um, I did for her. So, yeah. So the clock that I created out of this image for my daughter. Um, this is what it looks like. Let me just put it down. Just probably move this aside a little bit. 
and this is a clock so all my images um, can be on clocks as well like this one which you can get in my actual shop as well which are really cute for um, a little girl's room or a little boy's room or um, for anything you know home decor and it's unique it's different but for kids especially I think they would love little characters like this and I am happy to put any of my um, as I said my images on on these items so you can contact me and I can kind of get that put onto a clock so they are all in my shop there's the shop link will show you all the different items that my images can be on and um, and or I can commission one as well so you can kind of um, think of what your child's inspirations are and things or their favorite toy and I'll create something and um, impose that on a clock so this is um, I'm not sure if it's bamboo I'm trying to remember but the details will be on each item in my shop so she wanted a clock for her room and so I got this done for her birthday and I got the clock done so um, I think this is like a, a kind of a purse perfect let's see if we can get that so it's quite a matte you know matte kind of a look but, but that's what I can do I can put these on different items and clothing and, and a whole variety of things uh, pouches top bags and and so on so uh, yeah um, so she really loves that clock but the inspiration as I said was for my daughter to to try and do these characters and she now she saw me doing this illustration and she loved it and so I'm just glad that I could do something for her that is unique and it's inspired by her so it's even more fun to do basically and um, this character um, I don't even know how to I can't explain how I come up with the ideas for these characters I just kind of think of a little child being able to use their imagination as far and as wide as they can take it and so that means anything can go so here she's come across a bat really cute bat as well actually and um, the colors are the same in the eyes as well I did this just to unify everything and uh, and they're having a conversation of sorts um, she doesn't look too afraid <laughs> And also, yeah, I've written some stuff here as well. So I met a bat in the red tulip garden. Um, something, something, I think he said hello. He seemed, I think he seemed kind or, or a good enough or a nice enough fellow or something like that. Um, I need to look at that closer. So um, yeah, trying to use my poetry because I love writing poetry. So I'm trying to use my poetry and trying to use my uh, kind of children's story writing ideas that I get to also be part of the illustrations. So this is called I Met a Bat in the Red Tulip Garden. So that nobody's mistaken with which garden this is. Look at all the red tulips. So um, yeah, so this is, I, I love them all. They're just so yummy and I'm trying to get some more done because uh, I have so many ideas of different things to do and the textures as well all the experimenting because I'm very inspired by mixed media so when I'm doing like the physical painting that I'm doing currently I like to mix in a lot of different papers and a lot of paints different kinds of paints different techniques so but before doing all that um, in the digital aspect I've always loved kind of trying to get that same look um, so the layering of the background and then putting the character on top and letting the layers come through. Um, yeah, so it gives it something else, a different depth, I think. So I love these a lot. And um, so these are 10 by 10 prints and you'll get those available in my shop as well. Um, and these are archival prints, so um, they'll last a while and just keep them away from... <laughs> from direct sunlight so right now it's a, it's a dull day um, and yeah so I just thought I'd go through that and just discuss a little bit about some of my prints that are quite affordable in my shop and I 
post worldwide, so um, it's not a problem. But um, and then I wanted to highlight one of my different children's books that I also have in my shop. So these children's books, I'm gonna do a whole kind of discussion thing of each of these children's books, but I thought I'd highlight today's one would be this one. And what it is, is that I used to tell my kids, and I'm going to try starting again, I need to get my schedule in right, but I used to also tell my kids um, stories every night that I would make up and record on my dictaphone on my phone, And um, but they were getting really hyper, so I'm not sure if I want to keep on doing that. But um, this was one of the stories I came up with one night to tell them, which I decided to illustrate them for the kids so that they would have something to remember the story by. So this was also done, I, I drew these in Procreate. And this one's called The Cave for Rent. So it's about Otis. And Otis is an octopus, he's a very lonely octopus. And um, he decides he wants to, um, after he sees people, you know, other animals going past his cave with family and friends and having kind of different friendships, he decides he wants to rent his cave. There's a little crab sitting on that sign there. So he decides he wants to rent his cave. So it's the whole experience of him trying to rent this cave to other animals and how he feels about their behavior. And um, yeah, so it's really interesting little book, which I think will make a really nice gift as well for a little kid. And um, it was interesting because I'm trying to kind of figure out how to make children's books. And I've always been of the opinion, because I would love to have been involved in the whole publishing thing and everything, but today this world we live in is a very um, hands-on, I think, environment. So you can do so much with your ideas and you shouldn't limit yourself. So I just went ahead... And I've created quite a lot of them and I have some ebooks as well and I am planning to do more because I have more ideas, more stories that I've told the kids. So um, you can find a link for this also in my, uh, in, the, in the description below as well. So, but that's what I just thought I would highlight today. There's just some of the different things that um, I kind of use the, the art that I'm creating for. Um, to to be functional as well not just for creating sake but um i love posting on like facebook or instagram and places because it's sharing my work so it's fun to share and maybe give someone a smile for the day or or just to yeah just to share with people i don't think i um as creatives that we have a right to sit on our artwork because um, it's a visual thing that means it's supposed to be visible. That's probably the way to look at it. So if we keep it to ourselves, it's not really fair on other people. So I don't think you should ever be too shy to share your work, no matter what stage you're at, because then you get the confidence to keep on doing it. And, um, and it also pushes you to keep on going and to improve yourself because people will comment in different ways and some will give you good advice, some advice you can ignore, but it's to just, just to be yourself, be the creative person you are, to share for those who maybe need inspiration or something to smile at for the day and just keep it simple. Everything after that is a bonus, but yeah, I just love sharing and I've been inspired by different people I've come across also with their artwork so why not do the same so i just thought today that would be my session for youtube so um you will find all the details for my shop and for these items and much more but also yep yeah, i'll be back with some other updates and other kind of paintings um sequences um, not long now today was quite dark so i decided that i would not actually paint anything because I just thought and it was it's quite cold so I need to think this through I just recently moved everything all my paints from the house to my garage studio and it's cold 
I braved it yesterday, but today it's cold and I'm wrapped up in my robe and I didn't want to take it off. So I decided I would talk about <laughs> some of my prints and um, yeah, and just to show you some of the things that I've done with the images I've created. Um, uh, yeah, so that's it for today. So thank you for watching and please subscribe because it really it was kind of my um my my will to keep going sometimes when i'm thinking right okay it's just for myself it's good to know that other people are interested in seeing your work so uh yeah that's all for today so thank you for watching yay and i'll speak to you soon